It's Sam Onella night. Oh, baby. Well, this is the one that brought everybody back, and I haven't seen this one. This is where scientific animal names come from, which I, I, I'm, I'm learning along with its edutainment. Anyway, we all know about the scientific names of animals, but did you ever wonder what they actually mean? To find out, we must look to taxonomists. They're the guys responsible for the systems of nomenclature we use to classify organisms. Is that jellyfish? <laughs> the, that is the most solid looking jellyfish. It looks like a mushroom. Mule, liger, zedonk, skunk ape. They can live fulfilling lives, but they're all shooting blanks, so they don't count. On the other hand, in our innumerable tra- They can live fulfilling- Donkeys could sleep with zebras? That feels cruel. <laughs> what scientist came up with that? That's fucked up. Why not? D dude, I don't know. I just, it, it's not good. <laughs> I don't know why not. I just don't like it. Blanks. I'm bigoted to this specific issue. They don't count. On the other hand, in our innumerable trespasses against God, we can make things like Chidane Danes, which actually work. So dogs Ew. are dogs are dogs. Plenty of times, eight tiers isn't even enough for scientists, so they just stick new sublevels in between. Legions, cohorts, tribes, series, divisions. And if you want to keep going, you can throw all kinds of prefixes what? on any of these for even more layers. There has to be a better way to do this. More tiers? There has to be a better way to do this. I hate scientists. Now, I've scraped through the scientific names of a load of species, Jesus and most Christ. of them can be split into a few categories. The simplest ones are the animals that already have names in Greek Aww, or Latin. Cute. It's a lion. I'm calling it Leo. Done. <laughs> Multi-word names can be translated the same way. For the golden eagle, we got Aquila Chrysaetos. Gold eagle eagle. They decided to be a show-off and do eagle in Greek and Latin. Essentially the oh, same, though. But if a species is too words. specific okay. or exotic for a one-to-one -one translation, that's when you gotta get a little creative. A lot of the time, inspiration <laughs> comes from just giving the creature the old once-over and big duck duck is largest for example homeboy took one look at this thing and said yup red triangle slug i'm going on break we call this thing a fucking unicorn almost like that means one horn or oh something. that's kind of cute some guy dead ass looked at an octopus and said well all they got is heads and feet i'm gonna call them head foot and now biologists <laughs> everywhere say cephalopod unironically oh my god that is what that means latin is stupid i i think this is cool now if there's one thing that the scientific community loves it's clout and there's no better way to go down in history than plastering your own name on some shit you found they just named something after Sonic, right? And Robotnik? Didn't they just named, uh, there's like bacteria after Germa? Someone named a millipede Taylor Swift yesterday. Yeah, uh, could you just name things anything at this point? There's a flower named after Pikmin. What? Sonic Hedgehog is a gene that caused developmental issues. <laughs> Wait, really? Sonic does? Why would Sonic do that? Don't say true! Guys! <laughs> Stop truing! It's unironically true. Why would you give it, at least make it Robotnik or Shadow, like a bad thing. That blasted hedgehog ruining my development. Sonic the Hedgehog Protein. What? Abnormal activation has been implicated in various types of cancers, including Brit. Jesus, Sonic? The fuck is your problem? Wait, what? Robotnik? Wait, wait, what? Oh my god. Robotnikinin, a potential inhibitor of Hedgehog signaling pathway has been found in Dub Robotnik. But he always loses. Is Robotnik curing cancer? Plenty of popular celebrities have species named after them, but since all the big cute stuff was found and branded a while ago, most of these idols are commemorated through repulsive little invertebrates. You got <laughs> Scaptia, Beyonce, -a. the only oh, similarity queen, I can like gather here is thing. Queen Bee, looks yeah, like a bee, okay. both not a real bee. Jason Bond, a professor of biology at UC Davis, dubbed this little dude Mermechia Fila Neil Young <laughs> to honor his favorite musician. The world of politics is by no means immune to this phenomenon. Obama alone has fucking nine, as do a load of other presidents. <laughs> What? Obama has a bird? Like the fish is whatever, the worm, what? Birds are prime real estate, I would imagine. Trump's got a moth with funny hair. Uh -oh. Bush has a fungus beetle. Reagan's a wasp. Carter's got a darter. Oh. Even Austria's most famous painter oh. got the honor through this blind cave beetle. Mind you, it was 1933, oh, dude, so you sucks. can only blame the guy a tiny bit. Hitler actually wrote him a letter saying, oh, thank you, my little entomalo mensch, and then went on to do, you know, Hitler things. <laughs> Fun fact, not only was this beetle stuck with just about the worst name you could have, it's also now facing extinction solely because of its value to Nazi memorabilia collectors. Guess old habits die hard. Oh, fictional character. Wait, really? 
That poor thing. You're just a little fucking beetle trying to live your own life, and now people call you Hitler, and a bunch of skinheads try to snatch you up. In 2012, a single bone from above the eye socket of a hitherto unidentified theropod dinosaur was being studied. And suddenly, under the light of the full moon, the guy working with the specimen had his neck covered with hair and his lips clenched into a pog and his endocrine system <laughs> filled with soy, and he said, It's just like the eye of Sauron. Chewing on Funko Pops <laughs> oh and sweating God. cream of meme. The dino's genus is now Sauroniops from Eye of Sauron. Oh my God, I would... If I was in a lab with that dude, I'd probably beat him up. That's Coney. No, it's not! Oh my god! No way! This is now pissing me off. Oh god, it's gonna be even worse as we get older. What's nerd shit now, though? I feel like Gen Z doesn't have the same kind of issue, right? Among Us bug. Wait, you're right! Undertale! Oh my god, we're gonna have a Sans bug in our lifetime. You're right. Dude. Rick and Morty. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna get, it's only gonna get worse. SpongeBob has not a sponge, but a- f I fucking knew it! Fungus, the legendary birds from Pokemon each have their own, you guessed it, beetle, and the list goes oh, on. Oh, that one's cool, I like <laughs> Scientists that Scientists are That's nerds. Cute. This double naming convention has been done with a lot of subspecies, in fact. Wild Wild Horse, Spotted Spotted <laughs> Panther, or my favorite, Gorilla Gorilla Gorilla, just like- Wait, there's Wild Wild Horse? In fact, Wild- <laughs> I don't know why I love Wild Wild Horse so much. <laughs> Mario 64 level names. That's good. So I, I was saying that I don't, I've never seen the kid now. I don't think they're real. And somebody said, Coney, you have Wikipedia. And then it made me realize if I didn't have the internet or like if I was around in like the 1800s, I wouldn't think, I, I would be shocked all the time. I would, if I did not have access to media and the internet, I think I've seen maybe 10 raccoons in my entire life, not on the internet. Maybe. You're blowing my mind, Cody. Isn't it crazy? Like, seriously, think about it. That's nuts to me. That without, like, without media, we wouldn't know about any of these animals. I wouldn't know what an owl was. A bear would horrify me. Well, I, I, maybe that's why they thought there were, like, monsters and shit. I know that's, like, the sea monster thing, right? In the first Punic War, the Carthaginians pulled up with elephants, and the Romans thought they were demons from hell. Bro, imagine seeing an elephant for the first time. Horrifying. Oh my god. I would arrow myself in the head. I'd be like, alright, bro. <laughs> Origin of phrases. First is the phrase white elephant. Now, for those out of the loop, a white elephant is That's a like possession the... which its owner cannot dispose of and whose cost, particularly that of maintenance, is out of proportion oh, I to its usefulness. Like Secret Santa, and also right? a game played during the yeah. holidays for people who prefer random garbage over actual personalized presents. Wait, what's white elephant also called? Is it Secret Santa? Whenever one of the king's courtiers drew his displeasure through whatever means, he would offer them a gift of a white elephant. It was considered the ultimate insult to refuse a gift from the king, so naturally the elephant tea <laughs> would be forced to accept. Now if you know elephants as well as I do, you would know that they are freaking gigantic. They can consume around 50 gallons of water and 500 pounds good, of actually. foliage every day, which would be quite expensive to keep up in modern times, let yeah, alone that's hundreds a of years ago. Take care of this giant 50-ton albino elephant. What an asshole! Fun fact, elephants are responsible for the most zookeeper deaths of any animal because they're usually gentle enough to go right in the enclosure, but if you piss one off, it's smart enough to wait until nobody's around to help. What?! An elephant will assassinate you when nobody's looking? That can't be true. And they never forget. <laughs> you better not mistreat that elephant. Getting your goat, a phrase used when someone or something annoys you. In order to stop horses from getting nervous before a race, their owners would stick a goat in the stables to keep them calm. Apparently, the presence of a goat has some kind of therapeutic effect on horses. Kind of like a therapy dog, except they can't pet it on account of hooves, so they just... Sniff it for a while, I guess. That's so cute! Okay. That's adorable. Last year, an elephant killed a woman, and then showed up to her funeral to disrespect her again. I had to make sure she was really dead. Reposo. He had to swim to a different island to get to her funeral. What?! <laughs> How did he hear about the date?! That can't be real! They never forget. Who who leaked the date to that fucking elephant? Yo, listen, I, I know you you took care of your op. She's gonna be buried on this day. Go ahead and pay her a visit, just to make sure. Oh my god. 
If it kills woman then returns the funeral to trample her. Cut to a pack of young hooligans looking for something to do besides bootlegging and getting polio. They decide to break into the stables at night and Don't take his goat to an Aww. undisclosed location. Then when the race starts, instead He's of so running nervous. straight ahead like a normal person, the horse would run into the crowd and drop kick a grandma or whatever, and the old crotchety oh oil tycoon God. who owns the horse would stand up, shaking his cane, yelling, Those punks really get my goat. Wait, why do horses get nervous? Are they anxious about, like, performing in the race? That's cute. Mumbo Jumbo originates from the Mandingo people of West Africa. The Mandingos were a polygamous culture, and whenever a domestic quarrel broke out, they would soon hear animalistic screaming coming from the woods. They look over, and out runs this guy, known as Mumbo Jumbo. <laughs> now Mumbo Jumbo's arrival was considered a big deal to the Mandingo. The whole tribe would sing and dance in the town center until midnight, at which point Mr. Jumbo would uh, settle the dispute. And by settle the dispute, I mean tie the female to a post and slap her upside the head with a stick for an hour, while the rest of the village washed all hooting and a hollering uh, and then what? he'd run screaming back uh, into the woods where he, he would remain until the next complaint arose who is mumbo jumbo who was that man bring this back who decided to live in the woods and be mumbo jumbo what the mandingo uh, women didn't know is that mumbo jumbo is not in fact a wild patriarchal was deity it just from the, the guy forest, but merely the offending woman's husband or one of his <laughs> friends wearing a costume made from tree bark and leaves anyway the guy would be babbling nonsense the whole time which is where the phrase mumbo jumbo is derived from they were pretty smart back then would you be a mumbo jumbo for a bro that's a good question hey guy code would you be your bro's mumbo jumbo be honest Absolutely. See, that's a good friend right there. That's a good friend. Not a good person. <laughs> and certainly no friend to women. Pre-industrial surgeries. Oh, God. Oh, God! Oh, I'm running it. I'm running it. Oh, this is gonna be bad. It's called trepanning, which is a nice word for carving someone's frickin' skull open using nothing but a rock. Maybe oh! a rock on a stick if you were lucky. In all seriousness, though, you can see that a good deal oh! of care went into the procedure, which let- Damn, it's like a bowling ball. This is- this is actually kinda nice. They really care. Does your skull grow back? <laughs> well, I guess clearly not. That's a really stupid question. But you know how- how skin- Heals itself, you know? Was that a real question? Yeah. Like, if you make a hole at the top of your head, the hole will heal, the skull will not. One of which is the first recorded instance of rhinoplasty. That means nose the job. The nose job. A hornbill's okay. a type yeah, of yeah, yeah. bird. Do first, you get them plastered, obviously. Second, you use a leaf to measure out the part of the nose you want fixed. <laughs> then, you use the leaf to cut off a flap of skin from the cheek or forehead of the patient. Oh my god! Oh. Now, wherever you're looking to stick the new flesh on, you rub that part right ah! in your mouth. <laughs> also, the you're going to want to stick two plant what stalks in their doing? nostrils so their nose keeps its proper Doctor, shape. Doctor, stop! Slap the skin on, suture it, dust it with licorice powder Doctor, for some stop! reason, and cover it with cotton. Sesame oil should be regularly applied until Why the skin is Why did he do that? Is there, are there any noses that ugly? Let him cook? Do not let him cook! There can't be any... Chad is so mean. What would, why would you say that? Why was that your first response? Why is this the first thing you said? Why is Chad that mean? Instantly. That was so mean. For no reason. If I was sensitive about my nose, you know how bad that would hurt? <laughs> why, the why the fuck say fuck me for? What did I do? <laughs> Diogenes? This guy? The guy that pooped himself a lot? I get. Alright. Please, something fun. Well, we'll see. I don't know. Probably. Toss, Coney. What, what are you saying, toss? What's toss here? Wait, what? <laughs> Five years ago? That's a different one. It's okay. You guys are pissing me off. It's fine. Chad is wrong. Okay. <laughs> He just jerks off in public, <laughs> takes a dump in the amphitheater, pisses on passerby, whatever. The way huh? he saw it, he was just performing much needed bodily functions while also protesting the superficiality of the civilization ah, around him. Ah, very Keep wise. In mind, though he was an unwashed, publicly Is this guy just mentally man, ill? That's not all he was. His wit was easily huh? on par with his philosophical contemporaries. Oh, no, he's smart. His lack of inhibition meant that everyone... Oh, no! Fuck! Oh, my God. Guys! Guys! Chat! Are you fucking- Oh my god. God, okay. Alright, okay. Alright, alright. You did- You said it. You tried to war- Oh my god, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? Do the pirate video. Well, now I'm scared.
What? Where are we gonna? Where do we go now? Watch Mojo. Watch Mojo would never do that. That's true. Dead body hijinks. Our first tale follows one Elmer McCurdy. McCurdy steps up to play, right? Gotta blast the thing open. Except uh -huh. I guess the excitement kind of got to him because he ended up using like way too much nitroglycerin, <laughs> like inordinate amounts. Ended up completely destroying the safe All the and money's its contents. Go. And what few silver coins they made out with were literally melted to the frame of the safe <laughs> and had to be peeled off. Anyway, he died in a shootout with police later that this year. This guy just and fucking the loves exploding the things. Home he was sent to couldn't find any next of can on account of McCurdy being a rambling low life varmint. So so he just embalmed the hell out of him and said, Hey, boys and girls, want to see a dead criminal? Yeah, I would be excited. I would look at that if I was a kid. A few years passed when a couple of guys showed up claiming to be McCurdy's brothers with a note from the local sheriff to back it oh, up. Oh, they're getting all that Except money. These guys weren't his brothers. They were just a couple of crusty freaking carnies. They shipped the body off to Kansas to become an attraction in the traveling show. Wait. From here, McCurdy traded hands a few more times. Aren't there enough dead bodies? Do we need to ship the same guy all around the U.S.? At some point in his journey, oh he ended up getting coated in wax and paint to look a little less rotty before ending up in a warehouse in 1949. Here's the thing. He was in there alongside some actual wax figures. And after spending oh 19 God. years in storage, nobody knew he was a real corpse anymore. So he ended up getting sold in 1968 oh as a mannequin God. to one Spoonie <laughs> Singh, Jesus owner of the Christ. Hollywood Wax Museum. What a nightmare! But people found him too gross or this unrealistic looking for whatever purposes they had in mind. So this he ended up FNAF getting sold story. again. Yeah. and used as a prop of a hanged man at the Pike Amusement Zone in their funhouse <laughs> with the zero what? knowledge that he was an actual dead criminal. It wasn't oh until 1976, God. 65 years after his death, this that can't an episode be real. of The Six Million Dollar Man was being filmed at the complex, and a stagehand tried to move the prop around only to have its arm break <laughs> off in his hand. He was like, ugh. Lousy stiff. Wait a minute. That's oh my curious. God. This mannequin's got human flesh and bones inside of it. What an accomplished life. Honestly. That dude lived quite a life after his death. Timothy Dax, last chance. Coney will not believe this story. You don't think so? That child was Timothy Dexter. In 1775, as part of our growing independence from Britain, the Continental Congress decided to establish their own <laughs> currency, known as the Continental Dollar. Real creative there. Then the Revolutionary cool. War started, <clears throat> and it dawned on and people we killed that these England. pieces yep. of paper wouldn't be very useful in a giant pile of wet tea and smoldering patriots, causing their value to do one of those horny eagle death spirals. Then the Congress did, you know, that stupid thing that every high make school- Make the money, make the money, make the money. Dexter was like, ooh, ooh, I'm a wealthman. I I'm gonna do that too. And he spent the majority of his savings buying a boatload after boatload of the 1780s equivalent of blockbuster gift cards. By all accounts, <laughs> this should have been his ruin. But by some stroke of luck, after the Constitution was ratified, the new government decided that they trade Continentals for Treasury bonds worth one percent. Yo! Of it doesn't sound like much, but keep in mind, Dexter bought thousands of crates of bills for fractions of pennies apiece. He actually bitcoined the world's first crypto bro. His contemptuous contemporary still saw him for the loud, illiterate rube he was. So they started giving him deliberately awful investment tips in order to get him to bankrupt himself. One such piece <laughs> of advice was that he should ship warming pans to the Caribbean. For those of you born after like 1850, a, a warming pan's this dish on a long pole that you fill up with hot coals to warm up your bed. Not much use in a tropical paradise. But Dexter was undeterred by such frivolous things as logic. <laughs> Went ahead and sent over 40,000 of them to the West Indies. And they, they sold arrived, like the hotcakes. didn't really know what they were looking at and decided to use them as ladles for the sugar and molasses <laughs> refineries. And by the end of it, Dexter sold every single one at a markup of nearly 80%. <laughs> Frustrated that their plan backfired, the elites this, then this told him actually to literally a carry plot. coal to Newcastle, which is an old idiom used to describe a pointless task based off the fact that Newcastle was one of the world's biggest producers I'm pretty sure I saw this in Looney Tunes once. But by some divine providence, by the time the shipment arrived, the Newcastle coal miners had all gone on strike, and Dexter once again cleared the entire shipment with a hefty profit. He was like, man, I am so smart. By this point, this he was guy pretty fucking confident rules. in his speculations. I kind of like this guy. Me too, actually. This dude's kind of cool. Dexter was a very shrewd merchant. What a so sick life. Research, yeah, it's like, just everything you do succeeds. Smart? Then I learned about his life outside of business. He had two children whom the New England Historical Society describes as a half mad drunk and a completely mad drunk, respectively. <laughs> and he couldn't stand his wife on account of her perceived constant nagging to the point where he would tell guests he was unmarried and that he just had a ghost in his house. Just like, oh yeah, that's a sea <laughs> hag. You know, mansion built on some old Indian shipwreck or something. <laughs> Timmy, please. How does this guy fucking exist? How does this person real? 
All he does is win over and over and over to the chagrin of everyone around him, including his family. In a massive stroke of ego, Dexter decided to fake his own death, complete with a lavish funeral service just to see who would show up. He soon noticed that his wife wasn't crying, so in response, he jumped out and started hitting her upside the head with a cane in front of everybody. But as his true mortality grew closer... Jumbo closer moment. As I, he hit the mumbo jumbo. Dexter knew he needed a legacy and decided to pen his memoirs titled A Pickle for the Knowing One, which was basically <laughs> just 20 pages of unhinged ranting about politics, religion, his wife, and whatever else came to mind. No punctuation, random capitalization, the most amazing what? spelling I've ever seen. Here's some excerpts. George Washington. Attitude, philosopher, tobacco, general. And this is all just from the first few lines. The entire book is written like this. And just like everything else the guy did, the thing sold like fucking hotcakes. <laughs> this guy fucking rules. Oh my god. This guy is fucking amazing. Everything he does wins. His fucking memoir is full of nothing but word salad and he just he sells it like crazy. The best part is that when he got complaints about the total lack of grammatical anything, in the second edition of the book, he put an extra page at the end full of nothing but punctuation marks. Is this guy just shit posting? I would think I'm God. I would think so too, actually. I might actually think that I'm just God reincarnated. This was a good one. This is fantastic. It's a good channel. All right, we, we knocked out, I think, the rest of the Samonella. Pretty good. Pretty good. Not a bad series of movies. But now comes the feature presentation.